so hold on, we need to settle this for a second. I'm not against DeFi at all. I actually think it's going to be super, super valuable. Again, again, it's like when Roger and I talk about a digital decentralized currency ended up being uh, adopted globally. Super important thing. It's going to happen. That's, you know, quote, unquote, the finish line or the goal or milestone or whatever. Uh, it's just how do we get there? That's how I feel about the DeFi stuff. DeFi, and I think part of my issue with how it's being categorized right now is the Ethereum community thinks that they have a monopoly on that terminology, right? They, they, they're using DeFi as a uh, synonym for Ethereum. And it's not, right? And, and it's why I say things like, Bitcoin is the most valuable DeFi application. And they all freak out, oh, what do you mean, blah, 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 whatever. Decentralized finance, right? The core of finance is money. <laughs> and yeah. the most decentralized, most valuable application that is decentralized is Bitcoin. So mm -hmm. it's intellectually dishonest when they say, no, it's not. And ultimately what they're saying is that they're upset right? They, they don't want DeFi to actually be successful anywhere else other than Ethereum. And so we've made plenty of investments in companies that are building on top of Ethereum, that support Ether, that uh, use some version of a decentralized application or, or do something, right? So again, don't listen to what I say, just watch what we do with the money. And we're making investments. So we obviously think that there's value there, but I'm not convinced that DeFi is an Ethereum only thing. Right. Obviously, Bitcoin, it proves that. And so what you end up getting is you end up getting this um, religiousness about DeFi that completely ignores reality and also is intellectually dishonest when talking about it. And so what I think is going to end up happening is that is going to be detrimental to that entire space. What I hope occurs is that there's enough people who are rational and who kind of understand the structural pieces and that it ends up not actually mattering, right? But if you if literally, you can go, I tweeted the other day and said, Bitcoin is the most uh, valuable uh, DeFi application. And literally it was like a bunch of ETH trolls just being like, you're an idiot. You don't know what you're talking about, whatever. Like, do you understand yeah. what the definition of decentralized finance is? Are you triggering Bitcoiners and ETH heads at the same time now? No, because I think that, I, I think that Bitcoin people have this belief that, if something came along that had more market adoption and had better core um, kind of aspects to it than Bitcoin, they, they want to see a digital currency succeed, right? Mm -hmm. And so I don't think actually that Bitcoiners for the most part are married to the idea of Bitcoin or nothing. Right. I just think that they're very, very convinced that Bitcoin is the solution. And by the way, the market has validated that. Yeah. Okay. On the DeFi side, many of those people I do not believe actually are DeFi or bust. I think that they're Ethereum or bust. And I think that's very dangerous. So what would it take to change your mind that Bitcoin oh, is the I, only? I think that there's three key down. Yeah, there's three key, key things. So one is uh, a self, like a very serious self-inflicted wound in terms of some sort of bug or, or something introduced in the development process of Bitcoin, right? So no, no, I'm, I'm like, I'm like the other way. I'm saying, what do it take to change your mind that like Bitcoin is the only thing you should focus on and put money into? Me, meaning, what would it take to convince me to do something else? Yeah, just to forget all these shit coins. And oh, you're, you're saying what would it take to convince me that Bitcoin is the only thing worth putting money into? Yeah. Oh, I mean, look, that's what basically what we do. We, we hold no tokens in uh, from an investment standpoint uh, other than Bitcoin, right? The, the actual investments that we make are uh, Bitcoin. I, I own nothing other than Bitcoin. And so oh, it's, I, I thought you were putting money into DeFi stuff. You put it into companies. Into, right? into companies. Ah, yeah, okay, into companies, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So like that, that's my whole thesis uh, is Bitcoin will be the next global reserve currency. Don't know how long it takes, but that's going to happen. And then what actually the value that accrues is into the infrastructure, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so it goes back to the same example of like, if you invested in the seed round of Kraken or Coinbase or you know, any of these companies and bought Bitcoin on the same day, the equity investment actually has outperformed the just holding Bitcoin. Interesting. So when you look at it from that standpoint, it's like, okay, hold on a second here. Now, 
you can invest in 10 early stage startups and nine go to zero and you got to make sure you're in the one that actually does that. Right. So there's some nuance Mm -hmm. to to it, but it's just a belief that infrastructure is always uh, a much, um, a very valuable kind of profitable strategy. Uh, And then Bitcoin is going to be more valuable in the future than it is today. That's my belief. Right. And so are other things going to go up? Of course, like it take uh, Ethereum, for example, right, or Ether. Uh, everyone's yelling and screaming about how it's going up in value so much. Well, yeah, of course, because Bitcoin is going to lead in terms of Bitcoin having and the money printing and all this stuff will move. And then the smaller, the well, the, the smaller market cap assets will just move more in US dollar terms. But I think that, that like what it shows is those people are looking at this from an investment return perspective. I think that the Bitcoin community, like you said, they're not going to sell, right? The, the, a number of Bitcoins that have not moved in over a year is like 64, 65%. It's the highest it's ever been. Mm. They're not going to sell. And so it doesn't matter what the percentage changes if you're not going to sell. Because ultimately what you're doing is you're denominating how many Bitcoin do I have? I don't hear a lot of people in other assets in the crypto world talking like that, right? And so what, what ultimately ends up occurring here, and I think is very important, is when you look at a market, when things go down, the, the, the blue chip large market cap assets move down the least, right? And all the small caps, they you know, fall really fast. When you then go into a bull market, the large caps, they move the least, right? And the small caps explode up in value. It's a market cap thing. And I think that's what we're seeing in crypto. So if you said to me, you know, uh, am I surprised that whether, or I'm not even going to name some of the other ones, but there's plenty of them that, that are, you know, exploding. It's of course, because if I took a million dollars and I put it in that versus a million dollars in Bitcoin, of course, I'm going to move the market much more of the small cap asset because it's simply got a smaller market cap. And I think that's what we're seeing play out. Again, not a bad thing. It's just that it, it, if you're a student of history and understand how markets work, like not surprising. I, th- I think we get a new all-time high this year. I, I could see that. I, I don't know if it's going to happen. Like, uh, you know, look, the, the only thing, have you said any sort of uh, anything around price other than all-time high by the end of this year? N- no, because it's so difficult. It's, you know, I was having this conversation with my son yesterday. It was like, like I said, look, there's people who think the price can go to, you know, 30, 50, even $100,000. He's like, he's like, would you sell some? I said, well, that's a really tough thing because you can sell at 50 and it goes to 100. So I just don't sell. I just, I just know that I, a bit like you said, you, you know, what's your percentage? I just need to know I need to have as much of it as I need, and then I'll sell it when I have to sell it. And that's yep. what I'll do, because I have to sell it at that point. Until then, I, I, I won't. But I, I think we're going to a new all-time high this year. But I think if it happens, I think it probably happens before the election, which I know sounds soon. But to be honest, based on the previous time we went from. 12 to 20k it was pretty easy um but i think it happens before the u.s election because i think i think the stock market has to stay at a high value for donald trump which means you know and, i mean they're negotiating another stimulus package right um so i just think there's going to be a lot more money trillions more printed before the u.s election and then i think we'll get a new all-time high before the election because of that and i think people are very aware now i think the gold price has been very helpful because I've been telling people about the Bitcoin price. They don't care. Tell them about the gold price. They understand. And then you talk to them about Bitcoin being digital gold. In terms of where it can go, I've got no idea. Um, I don't know what like happens to liquidity. So say if Bitcoin's at like 100K and somebody thinks, shit, I've got one Bitcoin. I'm on 100K and they might want to sell it. I don't know if that people have that kind of like psychological reaction to it. And therefore, you've got a lot of selling pressure. I don't understand all that stuff. All I do think is I think we get a new all-time high before the election. I could be wrong. And I think next year is going to be fucking crazy. 